Red Dead Online had its 1.15 title update last week, and with that came a substantial amount of ability card tuning and balancing into the game. A couple of months ago, we covered the best ability cards at that time for both PvE and PvP, and I would say that list has surprisingly changed a bit with less and less of those cards that we covered back then staying in that list of what I would say are absolutely dominant or the most dominant ability cards in the game. So amidst the most recent 1.15 update and ability card changes, what are the best ability cards to use right now in Red Dead Online? I know there are going to be a lot of new players picking up this game for Christmas and playing it for the first time, and I definitely want to help those new players out. So we are going to break down all the best ability cards in this video with different loadouts you can try them out with, and towards the end of the video I'd like to also give some honorable mentions of ability card setups that are close but didn't quite make it all the way in my books, and being that it is my books, this is a subjective video for sure, although I definitely think some are still some hard meta ability cards. But let me know if you agree or disagree and what you would add or replace place on this list in the comments below and of course if you are new maybe consider hitting that subscribe button we are on that road to 100,000 subscribers and I would like to keep as many of you guys as updated and informed about Red Dead Online as possible but anyways let's get right into the best ability card setups surprisingly the update favored changing dead eye cards most in terms of actual in-game tuning and now with more limited and restrictive use on the tonics in the game both tier 1 tier 2 and tier 3 tonics the effects of two dead eye cards in particular particular have been balanced more in line with how the game was more towards the beginning after it launched. And with that said, one of those being Slippery is more so used in PvP, and since this is a PvE oriented video, it won't be on this list at all because anything to do with PvE is against bots and computers, and so the effects of SB don't really come into play as they do with real players who possess actual brains and thumbs, for example. But talking about the first ability card setup, the one I use most is Paint It Black, Eye for an Eye, Strange Medicine, and Cold Blooded. Paint it black, while Deadeye is active, you can paint targets on enemies and fire your weapon to shoot all marked targets, and each shot drains a very small amount of Deadeye, and you cannot mark or be marked while in defensive playing style. Eye for an eye, killing an enemy with a headshot restores a lot of Deadeye, Strange Medicine, you regain a lot of health whenever you inflict damage, and your health otherwise regenerates at half the normal rate. And then, of course, Cold Blooded, after killing an enemy, you will regain a lot of health over the next three seconds. So those are the four ability cards I use probably the most. This is my biggest setup. You guys know I am a big Painted Black player. I do think that Painted Black is one of the best Dead Eye cards and just one of the best or most necessary ability cards in the game. I'd actually argue it's the most important ability card because I'm always running. Rushing. I'm always playing as aggressively as possible in both PvE and PvP. I never really like to sit back and, and take enemies out at super long range. I'd rather just get in there with a repeater and a shotgun and blast people away. And Paint It Black allows me to do that because not only can you paint targets, and that's helpful for me when I am in those long range engagements with either people or enemies in the game, both in free roam and PvP, but the main thing about Paint It Black is it eliminates bloom. And if you notice that circle on your screen, it will close in, and the more that circle closes in the more accurate your shot will become because your shot can go anywhere in that circle and so if you're not using paint it black you need to wait and stand still and wait for that circle to close pretty much but with paint it black it just takes away the bloom and so that's why I use paint it black and ever since frontier pursuits that adjusted the amount of dead eye that gets drained with paint it black I'm pretty much always pairing eye for an eye with paint it black because I want to get that dead eye back upon a headshot. I'm always using Paint It Black 1 to get headshots, period, and so Eye for an Eye is always going to benefit me. And even then, if I'm just going for regular kills, I do get some dead eye back, although less so getting the headshots with Eye for an Eye. So those two always go hand in hand with me. But talking about Strange Medicine and Cold Blooded, we have the quick rushing playstyle cards, Eye for an Eye and Paint It Black. But with Strange Medicine and Cold Blooded, they're both just really good health cards to use. I'm always getting kills and I'm always doing damage, and so Strange Medicine benefits me because anytime I'm inflicting damage, I'm regaining a lot of health from that every shot I take on an enemy. And then of course, Cold Blooded, after I already take those shots and do damage on an enemy, Cold Blooded will come into play because once I take damage and do damage on an enemy, I'm killing them, and in which case Cold Blooded will allow me to regain health over the next three seconds after killing an enemy. So all of this kind of ties into giving me a lot of Deadeye back to use with Painted Black, and of course Strange Medicine and Cold Blooded come into play as two amazing passive ability cards to give me a lot of health while I'm constantly rushing around 
always killing enemies, always doing damage, always getting Deadeye back. It just all feeds into Paint It Black and health on my character. So that's one setup I would recommend you try and use. The other is a tonic-less health build, basically. Paint It Black and Eye for an Eye, I don't use tonics with that build, but this one, I also don't use tonics at all ever. Although you're all pretty much, you're supposed to use this next build always in Deadeye, or just in Deadeye as much as you possibly can. And so the ability cards with this second setup are as follows. We have quite an inspiration. We have live for the fight, kick in the butt, and the unblinking eye. Quite an inspiration. While Deadeye is active, you and your allies quickly regenerate health. If more than one member of your team has the ability active, the effects do not stack. With live for the fight, for example, you regenerate Deadeye slowly over time. With kick in the butt, whenever you take damage, a large proportion of it is added to your Deadeye. And of course, with the unblinking eye, one of the most important cards in this set just to keep this build going, basically as most efficiently as possible, your Deadeye and Eagle Eye drain much slower. So quite an inspiration is definitely the kicker right here because it is the Deadeye card. Not only is the posse effect very, very beneficial because you can always re heal not only yourself but your posse members quite an inspiration just allows you to be in dead eye constantly taking damage getting shot at in cover doing whatever playing aggressively as well and always re-healing and i would use this more so on legendary bounties tier 5 legendary bounties over paint it black the reason i'm constantly rocking paint it black as a general setup is just because i can hunt and mark animals in the head with that ability card as well with quite an inspiration i you know i, I it's not necessarily going to help me when i'm hunting so i want to change that card out for something but this is definitely good when you're expecting to take a lot of damage here in the game quite an inspiration is always going to reheal you and then you need some other cards to go with that you don't want to use any damage reduction cards because you want to be getting health back for example so that is why we're using kick in the butt and live for the fight with kick in the butt it's really great because of course with kick in the butt when you're taking damage you're getting dead eye back which is helping you stay in quite an inspiration and rehealing longer and longer and with live for the fight you're just regenerating dead eye slowly over time although they really should specify the time. It is very slow. It's about eight minutes, I think, if you just let live for the fight, try and regenerate your entire Deadeye ring. It's a really long time, but of course it does help you. And then lastly, the unblinking eye. You never need to take tonics because this lasts so long. Your Deadeye lasts so long when you have the unblinking eye on any type of setup. And when you're taking a lot of damage, kicking the butt's gonna give you Deadeye back. And of course, live for the fight's also gonna give you a lot of Deadeye, which all feeds into quite an inspiration, which the purpose of that card is to always be re-healing you. So that is a great self-sustaining build here to use in Red Dead Online. Now another Paint It Black build is Paint It Black, Eye for an Eye, Iron Lung, and Peak Condition. This is kind of just like another general Paint It Black build. Paint It Black and Eye for an Eye, like I said, always pair together. You use Eye for an Eye, get a headshot, get that eye back, so you don't necessarily need to take tonics to use Paint It Black more. You re- as much dead eye as you lose using paint it black you're gaining back almost to that degree with eye for an eye now iron lung is a different card here your stamina regenerates faster and you take much less damage depending on your current stamina level this is really good because you don't want to take as much damage you only have two more passive card slots to use here in this game so you should probably use a damage reduction card that also helps your generate or your stamina regenerate faster you're always running around probably taking down enemies again this is a very aggressive ability card build here and then also we have peak condition just to help you sprinting uses less stamina and you deal much more damage depending on your current stamina level both of these go hand in hand peak condition and iron lung are basically opposites of each other my stamina is being used less when I'm sprinting with peak condition and my stamina is regenerating faster when I'm using iron lung and I'm always gonna have a high stamina level because of peak condition, and I'm gonna do more damage because of peak, because it's at a high level, and I'm also going to take less damage with Iron Lung. So this is great. These two cards basically have four effects, and it's super good to use here in game. Now I also have some honorable mentions I wanna mention here. One is the tank build that was kind of nerfed and adjusted because of the use of tonics in game, and that is slow and steady, fool me once, Iron Lung, and Strange Medicine. This one is definitely more beneficial in PvP, although possibly not much so anymore. And I'll break down these ability cards as follows. Slow and steady, while Deadeye is active, you take much less damage and headshots do not kill you outright. Taking damage will drain Deadeye and you cannot run or sprint. 
Fool Me Once, on the other hand, is a damage reduction card, which is very beneficial. You take much less damage each consecutive time you were shot, and this effect ends if you were not shot for 10 seconds. Iron Lung again comes into play here, and then Strange Medicine comes into play. So the big changes here are Fool Me Once and Slow and Steady. This allowed you to take tier three tonics in PVP and just tank build, pretty much never die, just absorb explosive rolling block rounds all the time and never die. And now since tonics are nerfed and kind of limited in PVP, you can't be in slow and steady, basically magnifying this build's effects a ton and take the tonic you need to you know, you need to disable slow and steady, which will give you an opportunity to get shot and killed. So this build isn't as effective in PVP anymore, although it's still very good during the tier five legendary bounties. You wanna make sure you're using a build like this because you're just tanking bullets all the time. And if you're someone who's always absorbing damage and you're having trouble fighting back, this build would possibly help you out. And then the last honorable mention I wanna have here is painted black, eye for an eye, winning streak, and fool me once. Now, the only card that I haven't necessarily discussed here is that winning streak damage card in this video. Winning streak on one hand is very good, I think. Each consecutive shot on the same target does a little more damage than the last, and damage bonus ends if the target is not shot for 10 seconds. Now, this is a beneficial ability card if you wanna do damage on enemies. So again, this is probably another good build for tier five legendary bounties. Fool me once is helping you not take as much damage from each time you're shot from enemies in those bounties, eye for an eye is helping you with paint it black, get those quick headshots on enemies, and Winning Streak is helping you do more damage on enemies just in case you don't get a quick headshot. But a general build like this using one ability card from each slot, whether it's the defense abilities, one ability card from recovery, and one ability card from combat, as well as your Deadeye ability card, I wouldn't recommend something like this. I would stack a bunch of combat ability cards together, a bunch of defense ability cards together, or a bunch of recovery ability cards together, yellow, blue, and green. I just recommend that because the effects are gonna be magnified. They go more well together when you use a bunch of cards from the same suit. And you'll find that out as you play if you guys are a new player logging into this game. But probably my favorite one, the one I use just general because it applies to all the situations I get into and it also applies to PVP as well. It may not be the best at any one very niche specific thing, but it is so good at literally everything. It's kind of like a jack of all trades, but master none. And that is my first ability card setup I mentioned, which is Paint It Black, Eye for an Eye, Strange Medicine, and Cold Blooded. Now remember, all of these ability cards here, I'm talking about when they are at tier three, you need to rank up the ability cards fully. And if you're not doing that, I highly recommend you do so. It takes 10,000 XP and $350 to get your ability card from tier one to tier two, and then 15,000 XP and $500 to get it from tier two to tier three. So it's definitely worth doing that. If you're not upgrading ability cards, you're pretty much just not using an ability card in the first place. The effects aren't that great at tier one. They're a lot better and worth using at tier three. But with that said, these are the ability cards that I would say are the best to run here in Red Dead Online for PVE players and for people who like doing stranger missions, bounties, people who like just generally defending themselves in the free room and gameplay. And of course, the honorable mentions are definitely still viable in that contention for being some of the best setups. But overall, practicality wise, I don't know if I would say those are in my top three ability card setups. But anyways, that is where we're gonna wrap it up here. So let me know your thoughts down there in the comments section below. Is there anything in particular you guys would add to this list? Maybe something you guys would take away? Whatever it may be, feel free to let me know your thoughts. It's all subjective, but I wanted to share my thoughts here based off of the recent updates and recent ability card changes and the back end tunings to ability cards. But nonetheless, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video covering some of the best ability cards here in Red Dead Online. If you guys did make sure to drop a like down below and of course if you guys are new to the channel make sure you guys subscribe so you don't miss a single thing regarding all things red dead online and rdr2 moonshiners the hazard gang is on that road to 100,000 subscribers so any support would be greatly appreciated all my content arrives on a consistent basis as well so if you want to follow me over on twitch twitter and instagram those are the best places to get connected with me outside of youtube i practically live on all of those platforms and you can feel free to strike up a conversation with me or ask me a question whatever you guys want and whatever it may be all all of those links are down there in the description down below for you to click on. But with all that said and out of the way, thank you guys so very much for watching. I hope you guys all have a fantastic day, and I will see you all in the next Red Dead Online video. Adios, amigos.